Welcome to this Mad Skills episode on performance monitoring. In the previous episodes, we talked about metrics around app startup and jank avoidance and how to inspect and improve your app's performance. If you haven't watched them just yet, go ahead, pause this video and catch up. I'll wait for you to get back here. Oh, you're back? Great. Now, let's talk about making sure all the hard work to inspect and improve performance actually pays off by monitoring the results. Here, we also offer several tools, products, and best practices to help your app perform at its best. Monitoring performance can happen in one of two states. Firstly, in a lab environment. Performance data gathered here is invaluable because you can learn how your app performs before it hits your users. This helps you limit possible performance problems because the data that can be used as a key signal to support or block shipping of a release. You can also have fast turnaround time thanks to continuous integration. Using your continuous integration pipeline, kick off your benchmark suite every time a commit lands onto release branch or before it gets merged onto your main branch. This way you can compare between releases and raise a red flag in case the metrics are above a threshold that you decided on. Make sure to run your benchmarks on real devices. Instead of maintaining your own local device pool for testing, you can use a provider that offers testing on physical devices, such as Firebase Test Lab. Firebase Test Lab keeps devices connected and up to date so you don't have to invest in your local test device setup. You can use the scripting interface to run benchmarks on every build and continuously see results. Whether you choose to run benchmarks on local devices or with a cloud provider, spotting regressions can be tricky at times. To automate reporting, you have to set thresholds for each metric that you deem important and then compare it to a previously run benchmark. You will see performance fluctuate. Some builds might complete faster and some slower. Spotting whether an increase in runtime for a benchmark is a regression in your code requires you to compare more than two builds. Within our public Android X continuous integration pipeline, we have faced this problem in the past and came up with a viable solution. Instead of comparing a single build to the previous one, we accumulate a set number of builds and compare builds before and after a change has landed in the code base. While this might take a handful of builds to spot a regression, the approach is very reliable and scales well, even with hundreds of libraries and engineers involved. In his article on fighting regressions with benchmarks, Chris Craig describes exactly how that algorithm works in our code base and how you can integrate it into your continuous integration pipeline. The short version is, write some macro benchmark tests, then run them on real devices, collect the output metrics, and store them for processing. Run the step fitting algorithm over the amount of builds that works for you. When a regression occurs, notify your release guardian and the person that introduced the regressive change. You can read all the details about step fitting here. Now you know how a local CI pipeline can be used to run basic and advanced benchmark and regression tests. You can also monitor your app's performance once your users have started using it with field monitoring in production. The easiest way to monitor production metrics is by looking at the data Android Vitals provides. Android Vitals offers anonymized and aggregated data over your installed user base. To use Android Vitals, you don't need to make any change to your app's code whatsoever. Simply upload it to the Google Play Store and we'll take care of the rest. Android Vitals provides you with metrics on app startup time, slow and frozen frames, unresponsive activities, crashes, and more. You can compare how your app is doing in different categories, such as Android operating system version, available RAM, CPU speed, and others. It's valuable to periodically check in on the data provided by Android Vitals to see what could be improved. And if you want more details, Firebase Performance Monitoring has you covered. By adding the Gradle plugin to your app, you can see important information about cold start times, the rough source of slow and janky frames, as well as network request durations. All of this data is reported directly into the Firebase console. And you can get even more specific data using Firebase performance monitoring. Begin by adding the library dependency, then you can add your own trace points for any code within your app. Here we trace when data is loaded. By using the Kotlin extension trace function, the call site for loading the data can be wrapped. This is a quick way to span multiple methods calls. Alternatively, you can use the add trace annotation on a method. This provides you with a way to trace a single method every time it is called and then report it to the Firebase console. We're also continuously expanding our suite of Jetpack libraries related to performance. 
We have released the JankStats library that enables gathering janky frames alongside metadata, such as how the user got to the state where a frame had to be dropped. After you add the dependency to your app's build file, install JankStats into an activity window by calling create and track. When a frame is considered to be janky by the library's heuristic, you can log it and add it to your reporting queue. JankStats holds on to the state for you in a performance metric state object. And you can add and remove state and key value pairs. This enables you to add metadata, such as navigation destinations, which make it easier for you to reproduce how the user reached a janky frame in the first place. To see more usage of JankStats in action, check out the Now in Android sample, where we have added jank tracking code to key areas such as scrolling through the authors list or the For You page. The reported data will be shown to you as a per frame data, which you can feed into your reporting. This concludes our second math skill series on performance. You have learned how to inspect, improve, and monitor app and library performance around app startup and smooth runtime experiences. If you haven't already, go and create a baseline profile. It really helps to make your app run faster and smoother. We're aware that there's much more to cover when talking about performance. And while we didn't have time to cover everything in this series, we continue to add more content to our developer guidance and samples. Check out the links in the description for more information. Let us know what you think about this episode below. Hit the thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the Android Developers channel for more guidance and best practices all around Android.